Hello, everyone. Welcome to Computational Thinking for Creatives, Decoding Barriers to Entry. I'm Tadi Hakopian. Let's get started. A little bit about me. I am a design technology manager and developer at HMC Architects. I have a background in architecture, that's buildings, not uh, computer science architecture, with experience in coding and data related processes for modeling and design workflows. And it's a pleasure to be here today. So let's get started on our topic. All right, a little bit about starting point, the premise of this talk, computational thinking. Effectively, in my company, we need to teach architects again, the types of buildings, not code, computer architects, how to code and how to learn how to code, take new, take advantage of new technology for design. But they didn't know how to do any of this stuff. So we're thinking, how can we teach tactical coding matter in a way that's comfortable for people who are exposed to that? And we didn't want to um, explain about computational thinking and then coding wouldn't make much of a difference to them. We want to make them feel comfortable with the idea of computational thinking for a thought process for any related effort, because it's more than just programming and all that. But it's more about how do we teach people to get comfortable with a different way of thinking and working. And we have to also understand our audience for that effect to make them comfortable with this whole process. So what are they comfortable with? What are we trying to teach them that we can explain to them? Have they had exposure to any of this? That we have to really learn that first before we did a dive in a deep dive in all this. And when it comes to anything with code or programming with text, uh, creative people in this background, architects that could be just not even in any kind of design field, usually feel it's a little too abstract, technical, intimidating, and kind of like, I don't know this stuff, this is crazy. So how do we reduce that anxiety? How do we make them feel comfortable with the idea of computational process and coding and all that? Patterns, that's the easy starting point. There's architecture patterns, like we see in this uh, diagram of floor plans. Also design patterns that a lot of people have exposed to in computer science courses, they actually come from the same uh, well uh, of design patterns. And this is a great kind of common ground of, you know, how can you use patterns, thinking patterns, anti-patterns to organize your thought process, be a little more modular with how you work. So there's a lot of common ground in how, you know, programming and architectural design works uh, in their thought process. And we, we realized that the, four bases here would be computational thinking. And computational thinking refers to the thought process and expressing solutions as steps or algorithms that are carried out by a computer, but can be organized by a human being first. So you clearly define the steps, you use abstractions and pattern recognition to represent the problem. You logically organize the data. You break your big problems down to smaller parts. You approach the problem using programmatic thinking techniques like representation and operations. You reformulate the problem into ordered steps. That's algorithms thinking at that point. You identify, analyze, and implement possible solutions for the most efficient uh, outcome. And then you generalize the approach you created for the one problem into a variety of problems, just like design patterns. So that's what we realized needed to be taught first and foremost to all of our designers before they even got into coding, because otherwise the kind of um, established method you code and the way you use code is going to be very hard to come to terms with because it's not going to be very obvious. To them. And the essentials we covered with them to get started on this was understanding relationships with inputs and outputs, data flow, data types, and recursion. These are the fundamentals of data processing and underlying all the computational thinking. So that's how we break things down to these steps. And just for good measure, we had open source help for all of the open source lovers. Uh, we had tools like Python, Blender, Dynamo, Grasshopper, these are all open source uh, and completely free. So if anybody else wants to try this, they can. A lot of this is at your disposal. That was great for us because we didn't have to spend any money on using the software. Uh, so we established this computational thinking as the basis to get them started on the fundamentals of coding so they can take advantage of it, so they can do something useful, like in this example, uh, a, a representation of a skyscraper, something an architects would be working on something they can do with computer code that they can't really do by hand because it takes a minute to do this by hand. So everything we want to do is visually based. This is an example through Blender, using programmatic concepts in Blender to develop a tower. So it's, what can we do like this? So we thought, okay, we can't go straight to the tower. That might be a little too crazy and not everybody's going to design a tower. So we came up with these simple concepts of, okay, uh, what's a data flow? Let's start with data flow. Let's talk about those four points, data flow. Well, it's input, process, output, and then you, that's all it is, right? And in this example, uh, we started with the end in mind. 
uh, the end of mine in this case is the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Well, you need uh, a, a toast of peanut butter and you need a toast of jelly. And each one of those toasts has to come from a slice of bread. And uh, each one of those ingredients, peanut butter and jelly, have to come from a jar. So we gave these very like rudimentary examples to understand, look, even with something as simple as PB and J, there's a process to it. So that's the data flow. Work towards the end of mine. What, each, what is each and every step to get there? What would you have to do, for example, to cut the bread? You have to cut it first. You can't just go from bread to slices. These kind of simple steps help them organize your thoughts. And then we put into it what we call a visual script low code format to formalize the structure environment. So they go from, uh, okay, I want, in this example, water, uh, or excuse me, coffee in a cup of 12 ounces, and you can work towards that goal to do the same thing. And from left to right, you have coffee and cup, you have the liquid temperature, you uh, organize the coffee cup, you organize the hot water, you put them together, then uh, you have the water in the coffee cup at a certain degree, and you put the uh, amount you want of liquid, say 12 ounces in that slider you see here into a coffee cup. So very straightforward examples of organizing your thought into data flows and inputs to get you some results. So this has to be the groundwork. It seems like, well, yeah, this is extremely obvious, but for people who aren't comfortable with or haven't been exposed to it, this kind of rudimentary thinking at the same time, this very structured approach is not that obvious. Because then you can go from there into what we have here, and this is towards that modeling software where you can take the input process it into an output. In this case, I'm going to build a tower like this. The steps here went from some basic geometry coordinate points into a lineup of levels that then gave me an entire tower, which is very useful when trying to do uh, 3D modeling. And you know, you can interact with uh, low code and visual text coding or visual coding because you can't do that text. So this is the kind of fun stuff people do to um, learn how to work with geometry is to give them that process, but also give them the tools. And from there, you just take it more advanced. Again, uh, work with them end in mind, inputs, process, outputs. And this is the structure we have for them. And from there, you can take it more sophisticated, sliders and modifications, something that's easy to approach, but we level them up. You start with a PB and J example, and then you give them some basic modeling examples, and then you can get to something more sophisticated like this. And eventually, we can get into uh, text coding as well with the workflow. Like in this example, it's visual code that is derivative of Python code. And of course, we had to train everybody in this effort. So we had to figure out how to do parametric design training, computational design training, generative design training. So that's a little more down the road, but you can't just you know, show them a couple of examples. You do have to have a full course. And learning styles are important. Sometimes it's visual, audio, text, touch. Designers are a little more touchy visual people than uh, perhaps coders. And our team here at HMC Digital Practice is always trying to a lead by example. So this is the group for digital practice. And in this example here, we have a result of that computational thinking using those steps we had, in this case, designing uh, louvers in this library in the Bay Area uh, that can be responsive to light and heat. And again, we, this whole chart of visual scripting from left to right shows you what's possible there when you organize your thought into computational steps that rely on data flows, input and output, uh, hierarchy and recursion. To get things like this, uh, design panel generation on louvers that can control heat. Otherwise, somebody would have to sit down and do this manually for hours and hours. We get this awesome real world example and result from uh, code, which is very rewarding for anybody uh, learning this process. This is something we did here. So, to reiterate uh, key concepts, uh, coding and copy design is more important for the average person these days. So that's what we're teaching in the first place. You have to create a compatible teaching style to get people familiar with the concept. Now, I was just going to take to some. Uh, coding courses. Uh, computational thinking establishes a baseline of thinking. Uh, use resources that are compatible with people in your group or your organization to train them. Reduce the anxiety. Don't make them feel like they have to you know, solve a bunch of lead code challenges. That's not going to help. Create a structured course if you want to um, get them to learn and adapt. Try the skills on real projects and view, upgrade, and continue forever. It's always an ongoing process. And support your maintainers for the open source uh, tools like what I've used. Here's some resources for anybody who wants to try out what we talked about today. And special thanks to all the maintainers again. Uh, here's some names. And thanks. Keep in touch, guys. I appreciate the time. I'm always down to talk about computational design, computer architecture, building architecture, anything else.